welcome back to Fool Us, where we challenge magicians to try and baffle Pan and Teller with their killer trick to win a dream performance in Las Vegas. Now, you know all the rules, so let's meet the next challenger. Graham Jolly. Oh, Hello, my name is Graham Jolly. I'm probably one of the world's oldest mind readers or mentalists. Yeah, bloody marvellous. You're probably wondering what the word mentalist is. Well, it's different from a magician, although we all come from the same background. Four. It is four. But when I got to about 15, I thought it was rather childish doing this sort of thing. It doesn't feel right, you know. And so I stopped. Hello, ladies. Thank you. Would you help me? I've been doing this now for about 40 years, I think. Two of those years have been successful. The rest, well, it's been downhill, really. <laughs> I used to be the world's fastest mind reader, but now I'm sort of slowed down rather. I've now become one of the oldest mind readers in the country. I'm nearly 66 now, and people think I should pack up, retire, and spend more time with the family. Kill. I don't want to. Have you seen my wife? <laughs> the problem is, I've got a full pen and teller. I've got to do something which pen and teller couldn't even be bothered to try and work it out. In that way, I can sort of short circuit their thinking process. I hope. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I didn't care whether I um, fooled them or not. I would like to fool them. Goodbye. If you ever wonder what would happen if Basil Fawlty had gone into magic, I think we're about to find out. Will you please welcome Graham Jolly? <laughs> Tonight I'd like to try and read your minds. I have two experiments. The first one will definitely not fall Penn and Teller. The second experiment I very much hope will. There's no guarantee. The theme of the experiment is colour, ladies and gentlemen. Five different coloured snooker balls. I hope you can see them clearly. Red, brown, blue, yellow and white. And I'm sure each one of you in the room has a particular preference for one of these colours over the others, according to your personality. Jonathan, would you help me? Would you come up, please? A nice round of applause for Jonathan. Good evening. Jonathan. Don't shut him just yet, Jonathan, but uh, in front of you are five different colours of balls. Is that correct? I, I have my them. bag to you. I can't see what you're about to do. Jonathan, would you look at the colours and think of one of them now? And would you remove it? Would you remove it and place it in your right-hand trouser pocket? Your right-hand trouser pocket, please. Done. Does that look better? It's comfortable. <laughs> Four remain, is that correct? Yeah, uh, yes. Think of one of them, remove it. Would you place that in your right-hand jacket pocket over here? Okay. Visual clue, your right-hand jacket pocket, please. Have you done that? Yes, yes, You have sir. three remaining. Would you think of one of them, remove it? Would you place that in your left-hand trouser pocket? Your left-hand trouser pocket, please. Have you done so? Yes, and yes. You have two left? Yes. Would you think of one of them, remove it? Would you place that over here in your left-hand jacket pocket? Your left-hand okay. jacket pocket, please. Okay. Have you done that? Done. And Jonathan, you have one left, is that correct? Yeah, there's just would, the one left. Would you take it and would you place it in one of your inside breast pockets, right or left-hand side, and let me know when you've done so? please. It's done. Are they the all gone? Empty. They're all now, gone. Jonathan, most people think of those colours in a particular, particular preference according to their personality and character. I'm going to try and judge your character and try and work out how your mind works. Good luck. Are you by nature a fairly extrovert, outgoing kind of person? No, I'm quite shy. I don't like this. <laughs> Do you have difficulty in making decisions? Um... Yes or no? You are... <laughs> You're a complex person, I don't want you to deny or confirm my next remark. Don't nod, smile, or give me any clues, but I have a feeling you went for red. And I think you placed the red in your right-hand trouser pocket. Do you have a look? This should be the red. It is the red! Thank you very much. with the choice just four covers. You're the kind of man, I think you are, you're the kind of man who after a hard day at the studio likes to get home, put on some music, pour yourself a drink and put on women's clothing. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. You used to. And um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think you went for brown. I think you placed the brown in your right-hand jacket pocket. Have a look. It is I the did. brown. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that round of applause. Now that left you <laughs> with a choice of just three colours. Yes, sir. Have you in the last two or three years ever seriously, I mean seriously, considered committing a criminal offence against Piers Morgan? Well, on a daily basis. Who hasn't? <laughs> Interesting response. I think you went for blue. And I think you placed the blue in your left-hand trouser pocket. Do you have a look? It is the blue. blue. Thank you very much indeed. Actually, the choice is just two colours. Jonathan, don't tell me which, but just say yes or no. Can you remember your next choice? Not really. You Can can't. I have a little... <laughs> Let me have a look. Uh, no, don't look. Don't look. Obviously, I can't read Jonathan's mind because he doesn't know what it is, so I'll have to use a different technique. Guessing. I think you... 
probably went for yellow. And I think you placed the yellow in your left hand jacket pocket. Do you have a look? Yellow. There's the yellow. And the white. The white in your breast pocket. There it is. Hey, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I don't think that will fool Penn and Teller. My Aunt Mary can think of three possible solutions. <laughs> so may I invite Penn and Teller to join me? And that's a round of applause for Penn and Teller. Thank you. Thank you. I'm obliged to give you my card. I'm a financial advisor. And um, <laughs> I'd like to show you a card trick, if I may, gentlemen. I'll just give the pack a shuffle. Now, Pen. Yes. Would you kindly cut off about a third and hold it against your chest, if you would? Do I look? Uh, that's right. Hold it like that. That's it. Perfect. Well, do not look. Is that right? look. Yeah, you can look, but not me. Tell her, just cut about a half, would you, and hold it against you. Would you now, gentlemen, both look and remember your cards? Would you just yes. drop yours back, please, Pen? Yes, and it's tell hard. her. Sorry, it's a, it's a long stretch. Just and drop I'm yours huge. back. Tell her. I hope you don't think I'm rude, but is it okay to call you Tell her? It seems awfully familiar. It's okay. Okay, well, what I tried to do was a little bit of misdirection there. I was trying to distract Teller to uh, look away from my hands, but it didn't work. <laughs> I find it quite irritating, actually. And, um, I don't like your attitude. No, no. I'm joking. Forgive me. I've reversed two cards in the pack. The Jokers, were they your cards? Did either of you choose the Joker? No. Uh, I okay. Do not. Okay. Because the jokers will tell me where your cards are. To be quite honest, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how this is possible. I don't know the cards Penn and Teller cut to. I obviously wouldn't know where they are. But they do. They talk to me. You'll find this interesting. And um... <laughs> they will tell me where the two cards are. Hello. Can you speak clearly, please? It's not Channel 4, and um, <laughs> it's where? The 18th car from the top. Thank you so much. And um, tell us, Joker will tell me where your card is. Ah, that's clearer. 43rd. Okay, the, the Joker's tell me that the two cards are at the 18th and 43rd car from the top of the pack. I'm sorry, I've got to do this fairly quickly. I know it's dull. I'm just going to count down to the 18th card. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I never forget, ladies and gentlemen, what Sigourney Weaver once said to me. She said, Who are you? <laughs> I'm trying to make this entertaining. And um, <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Gentlemen, well, here are the cards. Pen, please, what was your card, if you would? King of Spades. The King of Spades. You were so close. <laughs> Tell her, you better just nod. Was your card the five of spades? Yes. Thank you so much. That, that. That. I know what you're thinking, ladies and gentlemen. You're thinking this is quite a lot of procedure for what is really a very minor miracle. <laughs> Obviously, the jokers don't talk to me. But the Jokers do have the power of prediction. Because before the show, Penn's Joker predicted 18, and Teller's Joker predicted the 43rd position. Thank you so much. Thank you.
think they've had long enough to discuss it, don't you? you think we should go back in? <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. That was great. Well, you know what I love is sitting from there, I'm watching, I'm trying to see what you're doing, I can't work it out. But the audience's reaction, when you pulled some of those last things up, they were looking at each other completely dumbfounded. That must be a, a lovely it's very thing satisfying, say. yes. They look genuinely uh, mystified to me. If they get it, are they done? We've had a great show. That was tremendous, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go, let's keep going. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think they've had a oh. They're still talking about it. Mr. Penn, Mr. Teller. Just ignoring me won't make it go away, you know. I mean, you're going to have to talk to us sooner or later. He's still... How rude are these Americans, eh? They come over here, they take our shows, they ignore our hosts. <laughs> Gentlemen, you look a little perplexed. Well, let's start with a few things it's not. Uh, you did not do a card force. We had a real choice of the card. Could we look at that deck now? Yes. We could. We could look at the deck. Well, I hope I haven't given you a clue. Uh, so, um, there is not, as you can see, these, this is a, as far as I can tell... I haven't eaten. Um, this is a, uh, <laughs> this is a regular deck of cards. There's not a bank. You could have had a bank of king and spades uh, a third of the way down. I was going to use that method, actually. But you did. Gosh, but yes. you did. I get the feeling, so you are, you, are you just fishing here? No, I'm not fishing. You know I'm telling you what it, what it couldn't be. Yeah. I'm building him up are you because it's so great. Okay. So I think by doing all of that with no force and no deck switch, you might know what my next words are going to be. I believe, Graham, you fooled us. Ah. You know Should we go back to our seat? You go back to the seat. Later on, I'll tell you how he did it. Please do. Please do. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't go away, because after the break, Mr.